and welcome to my channel. This is Nina from the Forgotten Bookshop Girl and I've had an idea. Um, I've been wanting to send more cards and just proper mail to friends and I thought if I just did one a month then that would be a really good start and if I did more then that would be great but just one a month would be fantastic and um, maybe even start by just sending people proper birthday cards. Um, so, um, I thought, what about making some of my own cards? And then I also thought that by just making simple cards, I could at the same time kind of like try out different techniques or just, you know, try out uh, some, I don't know, either painting technique or drawing or mixed media or something. Because very often when you try something new, I, I could, sometimes I find I don't really know what to do with the result, but I thought if I could maybe turn that into a card while trying something out, then um, I would, you know, I would know what to do with the result, you know, if it's any good. So anyway, it's going to be, I'll start it with kind of like a mixed media background and I'm using just, um, this is an A4 cardstock. And I've got a whole bunch of cardstock where I've printed something on one side, but then kind of like never used it. But I keep those because they're perfect for these, um, you know, things like mixed media. And here I've just got some PVA glue and I've just added a tiny bit of um, water to it. And then I got my, I have my whole, uh, all of my boxes with various um, offcuts because that's another really fabulous way of uh, using up the offcuts and now I'm just going to put loads and loads of stuff basically I'm just covering the whole uh, bit of cardstock with bits from my scrap paper I'm kind of like in my scrap paper. Now that's, this is how I'm adding water. Um, I've got a kind of like all sorts. I've got book pages and I've got um, kind of a pages from notebooks. I've got, um, yeah, really just offcuts of different bits of paper. Um, I've got offcuts from um, book pages where I've you know made things from book pages but I've got off cuts so it's a real mix of all sorts of things oh and envelopes as well okay so here we go um it's all covered so now I have to wait for it to dry so I can now carry on filming my my Skillshare class and once this is dried I can come back to it and work on the next layer but I'm really pleased with the result I've only just thrown like a few things bits and pieces on um, the table to use so I couldn't really overthink it and um, yeah I'm pretty pleased with the result so we'll see what it looks like when it's all dry so here we are this is all dry um, as you can see, kind of the, the cardstock has have kind of warped a little bit. That's due to the PVA glue, but I personally don't have a problem with this happening. And I find it's kind of like part of the charm of, the, um, of creating mixed media postcards. I'm really happy with the way it looks. So ne now I'm coming to the next stage. I'm sure you've, you might have heard me talk about the creative sprint. And I'll leave more information about that and a link to where you can find out more and also sign up to the Creative Sprint uh, in the description below the video. There's actually another Creative Sprint happening right now in February with prompts coming out on the Creative Sprint uh, Instagram stories. And it's basically you get you can you can sign up for free and you get a daily prompt to just create something and it's kind of not supposed to make you overthink but it's just uh, supposed to inspire you and just to be 
you know, to help you be creative on a daily basis and just do a tiny little bit. Um, and the whole creative sprint is um, has been brought into life by Micah Scalin and her brother, who's also an artist, Noah Scalin. He did the Skull a Day project, which is also really cool. They've brought out, they've got uh, a few books. I've got one or two of the books and they're absolutely fantastic. So just that as a quick background. So if Micah did something in her Instagram stories, which I thought looked really, really cool. Um, so she had a, a kind of like a, just a blank piece of paper and then just drew circles on them. And the circles were uh, kind of one next to the other and overlapping and everything. And then once she had all the circles, she would colour in part of the areas that were overlapping. I hope that makes sense. And when I saw that, I thought, I really love the idea. It's so simple and you can do so many things with it. And um, I was kind of thinking about, I think I would really like to have that as a postcard. And that's how kind of the whole idea came up where I wanted to uh, do kind of like a mixed media background and then do that on top. So, but because I want to be able to um, then when I'm colouring in the areas, I would like to probably, I might try and use ink. Not sure how that's going to work on this background. We'll see. Uh, possibly, uh, or, or maybe acrylics. I, I don't know yet. So, but, so I'm going to use acrylic ink for the circles because I want them to be waterproof. And I thought I could just add a bit more, you know, variety, a bit more fun. So I'm, I'm trying to do different sizes of circles. I'm just trying to work out where I put my other, the other template I wanted to use for this. So hang on a sec. So I've just got, you know, this is a roll of sellotape and then I've got the lid of, of a jar here. So I think I might just go with those two. Um, I've been, oh, I'm in the process of decluttering and my uh, studio, so I can't find anything. I don't know where I put my nib pens. So I'm just going to experiment with kind of like that. Um, I'm just going to draw circle shapes. And I quite like the idea of, you know, the circles and the ink looking a little bit messy. I think that's one of the reasons I would have quite liked to have uh, the nib pens because then you could have had the line kind of like, um, you know, thinner and thicker, but that looks quite nice as well. I think I need to use a little bit more ink there. Uh, I've also got this acrylic ink, which is kind of, what is it called? It's kind of a black, but it's more has kind of this sheen to it. Um, should have thought this, oh, I just couldn't put it here. I've got my fantastic plastic background. So let's just see what this looks like. It would be quite cool to have some splodges on there, but I'm sure that's going to happen anyway. I'm getting quite a bit of ink on my, you know, on the, on this roll of sellotape, but it's kind of like at the end, it's almost finished. So that's okay. So if you were doing this, you know, think of using something where you don't mind, oh, fabulous. You know, where you don't mind having ink all over it. I actually really like this. I'll try the other one, maybe a smaller circle. Maybe just have this. And then, you know, just go around without really thinking too much about this. I'm sure you could also use, well, not I'm sure, you can use uh, just, a, you know, a pen, kind of like a uniball pen, uh, depending on what you want to do with it. If you want to use um, something like inks or watercolours, you would, might want to use something that is um, kind of like um, waterproof. Gosh, why can't I think of the name? 
but otherwise if you were using you know if you were using kind of like marker pens then you know that wouldn't be so important so it really depends on what are you going to do next but I kind of like really like like the messiness and um, you know with what I'm doing here because that's what I was really looking for okay let's just carry on with more circles circles we've got lots of circles and a lot of mess um, on here um, I've got my fingers covered in ink um, but I think I'm going to leave it as it is right now um, will be interesting to see if what I've had in mind is going to work and if I can use the inks to colour in kind of some of the areas in between and also what that is going to look like. So I'll see you once this has dried. I'll get my inks out in the meantime and then we shall take this further. Okay, the light came back out, so I'm hoping I've got still enough light to um, carry on a little bit. It's very overcast today, um, so I'll have to check. Anyway, I've got some drawing inks out. I have absolutely no idea if this is going to work or not. Um, I've chosen a few colours I think I might want to go with. I've got some red and I think and I realized that I want to use colors that are already in here so I've got some blue and I've, I've well I've got gold gold is not really in here but I feel like this is kind of a bit gold I've got possibly silver just because I really want to use those two uh, inks I've got some blue red then a sienna I might possibly go into into a yellow but I think I might just stick with sienna I've got kind of a grey kind of grey I'm saying grey because I've got from I've been running an ink drawing class and at the end of the class I've just been collecting all the inks that have been left in the palette uh, just because I really like to just keep using you know using materials so I think that's probably this one. So this is quite faint but as you can see it still works. I've got a book page um, just here uh, to try out different colours. I've got my water jar so I'm going to, I've got some pipettes because I've got with these inks, some come with a pipette but these don't so I think I really have to start with gold just add a drop and then after see I don't know how um, you know how pigmented the gold is so we'll just we'll see I tend to just clean out the pipettes kind of immediately and also uh, put the um, top back on the jar otherwise I'll probably just knock it over let's just put that over here Let's just see what this looks like, because I kind of feel that the gold might not be as strong a colour as, let's say, the black. I mean, if you're using black neat, it's just really, really black, and all the other colours are quite strong. So I might just use this and get started. So again, I'm trying to just not overthink the whole thing, but kind of like just go for one area, maybe the tiny little one here, and just see if I can kind of like fill the gap and also to um, just see if you know how the inks react on this because I don't know because there was like you know you've got I've got the PVA glue there as well if that makes a difference to it but that seems to work okay so maybe the inks work let's have a look I've got in here um, I have to try and remember the other colors I think I've got some sienna here which I think is that was oh yeah I think that was sienna so there's definitely enough um, color here yeah they come they're very you know they're very very strong colors which is great because then you can do all sorts of 
you know, values of lighter and darker. Do I like the sienna? I don't know, maybe because if I've got the gold, I don't know if that would be too strong. Maybe I would prefer to go into... I could just do a tiny area and then just see what happens. Because now if you, I've kind of like got that colour a lot anyway. Did I say I wouldn't overthink this? And now I'm doing it anyway. Okay, maybe just have it... Oh, let's just go for this one here. Yeah. I like the colour, but I'm um, not sure I'm going to use it. So I think what I might try and do is... Oh, I know. I know, I know, I know. I might either add some gold on top or just wait for it to dry, maybe add some black. So it's like a really muted one. Okay, let's go for some other colour. Oh, red! I might just add red on top. So no sienna, that can go. I had sepia, so I don't think I'm going to use sepia either. I've got red. Let's see what the red does. Oh, marvellous. Let's get some red out. You really feel like a scientist when you're just like, putting some red in there. Um, oh, I should have put them in here because what I usually do, because in these containers I can keep the ink for a bit longer and it doesn't dry out. So I usually put the the drops in here and then the diluted version over there. Oh well, we'll just see what happens. We shall see. Let's... That is definitely too diluted. Let's go for... See how this works. That's actually a really nice one. I might just see. I know I said I would wait until it's dry. Okay, so that's too dark. I think I just want to. I just want to cover this. There. Let's just see. Okay, I want some blue now. Wondering, I might have some. Do you have any blue in here? Ready? Maybe not. I really just need kind of like a, a drop or two. I find you can also do this sort of thing if, if you're just if you're just experimenting with um, some you know with a new medium or if you haven't worked with inks before. I find that is just a really great way of um, starting to use it and just see you know you can work with the different values and um, yeah see what brushes you like to use with them and how you can mix them and everything. Why don't we just carry on? Um, oh this is actually bleeding over here. Right. That's interesting. What I really like about this one here, it actually says blue, shiny blue on its back. That is quite cool. I actually prefer that to be, I think I prefer all the colours to be a lot more diluted. I should have brought, I've got kind of like tissue or something. Yes, yeah, so I'll do that in a second.
Okay, I'll just carry on um, filling in gaps and just see how things go.